Welcome to this edition of Sunday School. I'm your host and teacher, Dikin Kendi at King Pelo, and we're going to be talking about something that is very paramount to Christianity, and in fact, it's something that we talk about all the time. And the title is The Signs of the End Time Are Here. Lesson 44 of the Sunday School Manual that was written by Daddy in the Law Pastor E. A. Adeboye. We're going to talk so much on this because just to bring you up to speed, there are quite a lot of things that are happening in our, in our world. There have been terrorists bombing up and down, people putting uh, bomb vests and blowing other people's up in the name of religion, in the name of their faith and so on and so forth. And I believe these are actually things that are example, they are exemplary of the end times. And we need to go into so much details on this, on this edition of the program. So you have to be with me, you have to sit up and listen and watch because God is definitely going to open up your eyes of understanding and you're going to get something fantastic from this program today. There are two people that are on the, uh, on the program today. When we come back, we introduce them. The 2014 through 2015 edition of the Sunday School Manual is out. Your Sunday School Manual now comes in your heart language, such as Yoruba, Hausa, Hebrew, Thief, Idoma, Ethic, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, Russian, German, Dutch, and English really and still counting. You can grab a copy of your Sunday School Manual and your Sunday School Workbook at any RCCG parish or any CRM bookstores around you worldwide. For more info, you can contact us on www.rccg.org. Any Sunday School class you miss is like a treasure trove. Here with me is a lady that has been on this program, you know her so well by now, and she's a lecturer in one of the higher institutions in the land of South Africa. I'm talking about Sister Ayodeji Omolara, you are welcome to this program. Thank you, sir. Good day, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. And also, there is a man that is here that I will talk something about him as we go along. His name is a South African, and his name is Brother Dominic Villacase, you are welcome, sir. Good day, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Thank God that you are here today. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Just in the way of introduction, uh, Brother Villacase happens to be a teacher of the world, and he has been to Nigeria. Just to think about it, he's been to Nigeria in the school of ministry. And uh, how was it then when you went? I really want to thank God for the opportunity to be able to go there and learn. It's an experience that changed my life, first of all. Spiritually, I grew. Uh, in terms of what I grew. So there were different aspects that when I left and when I came back, I knew that I changed. And so, but the other thing that I've learned is that God began to cultivate my ministry into a different level. Mm. When I came back, I came back and I knew that I was sound. And I also knew that also there was a hunger to learn more. And the opportunity that I was given by the redeemed Christian of God, I'm forever grateful for it because I believe it has launched my ministry into a different level. And from now on, it is more hunger to do the word of God. It is more thirsty to serve God. I said to somebody the other day, I said, I've never been so sure in my life. Mm. This is one thing I'm called to do. Mm. And so I'm decided to close my eyes and throw my faith mm. and say, this is what God has called to do. So that experience for me changed my life. But I knew that when I was in Nigeria, I couldn't make it without the grace of God there mm. because situation was different, food was different, everything else. But I think the revelation that God gives a man mm. is what keeps a man from the storm. Mm. So that revelation that God gave me is the one that took me out and helped me to finish. And I'm grateful to come there. And I believe that you know, with the grace of God, we went to work together with pastors and move the work that God has called us into the redeemed Christian of God. Praise the Lord. When we are discussing right uh, of the set, you made mention of something that there is different between school of the ministry that is training as a pastor yes, yes. and being um, being in the school of mission. In the school, yeah, on the school of mission. Yeah, quickly just to add on that, the school of mission has to do with the practical and there's a theory in the practical side, and the school of mission has to do with a lot of hardcore ministry mm. into villages, into hard places. You know, when you look at South Africa, you look at uh, everywhere around the world, people want to be in the places where it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. You look at the mission work. The mission work has to go to a place where you can hardly find a church when you are driving for mm -hmm. an hour. You can't find a church. And nobody has heard about God or Jesus Christ. 
So ministry on the mission side has to do with being a hardcore man of God who's able to go to a place where nobody has gone. You know? So that's, that's the difference between the two. But the teaching is the same. There's a theory and there's a practical side where you go and, and begin to handle your parish and you begin to know how the ministry is being run. Praise the Lord. On one of this edition, when we have something to do with the school of mission, yes. then we call you on that program. It will be a pleasure to have to, to, to be there, to come. Praise, to praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, we are quite honored to have him on the program. But let's start with what we have today, which is the sign of the end times are here. And before we start off, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity given unto us again to gather and to bring your word. Let your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as we want to talk about your word, Lord, please teach us your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, we pray that you will give us the understanding to know the signs of the end time that will be unfolded in today's teaching and many more that will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us the grace to be prepared for your second coming, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The signs of the end of the end are here. That is the title that we have. If you are just joining us, that is the title lesson 44 of the Sunday School Manual. The sign of the end times are here. And let me quickly ask a question. End times, what does it mean? End times, men of God, means people being lovers of themselves. It means disasters. It means famine. It means nation rising against nations. Mm. It means people going to an extent of doing everything to get money. It means so many things that when you look at it, you see that this is not how God created things in the beginning. Mm. So anybody who's got eyes enough to see will, will actually see this. This is not normal. Mm. You understand? This has, God did not create things like this. So it just gives you that picture. So even if somebody is not born again, come to a point of saying, truly, if this is Jesus is coming, all these things are truly giving us an idea that truly there is an end time. Mm. And also, when we talk of end time, end time is also, is, we can also say is the time that precedes the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's, it's also the time that precedes that precede the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world. Mm. Because end time must come before the, the world will come to an end. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. End time. Not many nomenclature regarding end time. End of, time, end of time, end of day, the rapture. There are so many names that have been given to this. But let's go straight to our passage because it's going to give us blow by blow the signs. What are we looking for? How do we know the times are ending? Our lesson is taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to 14. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciple came to him, for to show in the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount, only the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceived you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet come. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. 
Interesting. Now we see so many things happening, Brother Villa Gas. Yes, sir. Bombing, as I mentioned in the intro. Yes. People killing one another. Yes. Nation fighting against nation. Yes. Recently we knew what happened in, uh, in um, Kuwait, in different nations of the world. But then, I want you to think about this. Has the end come yet? When we come back, we talk about that. The Redeemed Christian Bible College, South Africa, a top class Christian college where we train leaders who will influence the world through their various callings and professions in deeper things of God. We offer certificates in theology, diploma in theology, and postgraduate diploma in theology. We have several campuses in South Africa, which includes our centers in Randburg, Breeds, Rustenburg, Pretoria, Poloquine, Cape Town, Durban. Bloemfontein and Eastern Cape. Admission is currently on as we set for a new session. For more info, please call us on our hotline. That's plus 2782-761-2855. Plus 2711-781-5288. You can also fax us on plus 2786-668-2855. Or you can email us on info at rcbc.org.za or visit our website on www.rcbc.org.za God bless you. Brother Vizlakazi, I asked a question before we went on break. Yes. Sir. Has the end come yet? No, the end, the end has not come yet, sir. Mm. You know, the scriptures give us so the Bible gives us so many uh, verses that tells us that what we are seeing now is not the end. First of all, the gospel has to be preached mm. all over the world. Somebody needs to receive Jesus, somebody needs to be saved. Until we're able to get to that point, the end has not yet come. And the love that God has for human beings. You cannot be at the point where you just say, I'm stopping here, everybody must start. So God is still extending his love. Mm. God is still extending his faith to say, somebody needs to hear this good news. That's like I've received it. Somebody preached to me. So mm. I need to be able to extend it. So God has extended his love that I've come to know something that what God does for us is based on love. Mm. Everything boils down love. So if God has not destroyed the end, it simply means that God has still left the love to be able to reach somebody. Praise the Lord. Mm. You want to head to that? I would like to add to that. The end has not yet come. But all this thing we are seeing is just the sign that the end is about to come. And the end will not come until the gospel is preached all over the world. Mm. So that no man will be able to justify him or herself when they stand before the throne of judgment. And say, oh God, it's because I did not hear about the gospel. It's because I haven't heard about that name, Jesus. So that is why God is still waiting in his infinite mercy extending that love to both young and old so that this world can be preached to all nations of the world then the end will come brother villagas yes, sir. nobody mm. knows when the end will come am i right yes no. nobody nobody not even angels not even angels nobody knows and who knows now it is only god who knows it and the interesting thing i was talking to somebody i was teaching somebody i said you know everybody lives their life anyhow mm. and somebody will tell you listen i'll die at the age of 70. but the interesting part is that nobody knows when they will die mm. 
So everybody will say, me, if you tell them about Christ, they said, no, I'll get born again when I'm 70, you know, I've surrendered my life, mm. I've lived the way that I lived. I said, but the interesting part is that you don't know where you die. Hmm. Because that, that makes a very unique thing to say. You can't just live anyhow. Mm. You can't decide just to be careless and just live anyhow. Because the minute that we walk out of this place, we don't know what will happen. So that's why the Bible says, take heed. That means whatever you have, you hold it so tight mm. that I, I must make sure that I don't lose it. You understand? So that, that's, that's where I, I'm looking at it. I believe for some people, when they die just now, their yeah. hand has come. Their hand has come, and their rapture has come. And mm -hmm. so everybody assumes that, that everybody is still waiting that the rapture will come as, as expected in Scripture. Mm. But the end time can come on one on one to a man. Mm, and really? once it comes, it's done. So everybody is assuming that we are waiting. That's what their father, the, our forefathers were telling us. That no, this Jesus, is, we said he's coming, but he's not coming. But on one on one, once it's come on you, that's it. So that's why really every man has to take it and do what they have to do. The passage that we read talks about so many things. Signs of the end times. We're going to elaborate further on that. Mm. Sister Omolara, let's look at the end, the signs of the end times. Can you give us a few of them? According to the Bible passage we read, there will be signs of increased knowledge. Mm. The knowledge is going to increase. And we can see nowadays that this knowledge is increasing. And it's not just increasing positively or to the glory of God. It's increasing negatively. So it, it's increasing in, 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 the, in such a way that people will think that there is no God. Mm. Let's just take, for instance, the issue of evolution. Mm. The evolutionists be believe that there is no God, that they, they evolved from, from apes, mm. you know. And um, also, this issue of cloning, the, the, the whites in America, they, they try to clone human beings. They try to, 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 to ensure that man will not die. They just want to make man. So this, this issue of increased knowledge is increasing day and night. And even devil now is, 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 uh, has increased that knowledge in the issue of... Um, social networking like facebooking instagram imposing those um, evil knowledge through the internet so that people can get conv confused and think that okay this is the right thing for them to do because it's rampant it's everywhere it's in every corner of the world praise the lord Hallelujah. brother Villacazi, just to add to that point i was reading this passage now mm -hmm. and i discovered that from passage matthew 24 from verse 1 to 14 mm -hmm. there was actually there is an overlap of so many things, of signs mm -hmm. that will be showing to us that yes. the end has come. Yes. Mm. There are some of it that says the pulling down of the temple. Mm. Mm. And we see bombing that is going bombing. on in churches. I, I even heard recently of some churches that people enter and begin to, to shoot the worshippers. Yes. Man of God, let me just, sorry to disturb you, but let me just share the story with you. We did research at school, when I was still in school, mm. that the, the other people from other religion, I won't call their name, but mm. they've come to a point that, for an example, in UK, if there are five churches, four of them have converted it. It's either maybe they are nightclubs or they are something else. Mm. So get to a point that where other people have gone to an extreme of converting, of changing this gospel, of changing anything that has to do with God or anything that has to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ and converting it and making it any other way. If you have a street that has four churches, five churches, mm. all of them have already been converted into an iClub. That tells you, mm. anybody who's growing up, those kids who are growing up, they can hardly find a church when they are growing up. So that tells you the, the, the lifestyle or where we are heading to, in, into the future. That is, it's, it's, it looks as if it's even more than the issue of killing now. It is small. It is small because they are on the mission of making sure that Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ is, sup is suppressed and they continue their agenda. The funny things, I'm going to throw this to you now, Sister um, Omolara, is that when we look at the passage from uh, verse 2 to 6, it talks about so many things, signs. It talks about the pulling down of the temple, as we have talked about now, the deception of many. It talks about those who will come and call themselves Christ. And it talks about rumors of war and uh, wars happening. And he said, end is not come. Does that mean the end has not come? Yes, Pastor. The end has not come. They are just the signs to show that the end is near. Mm. They are just the signs to show that Jesus, the second coming of Jesus Christ, is coming back soon. And the, 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 the scripture must be fulfilled. He said there, there will be rumors of war. Mm. You can see nowadays there are earthquakes, wars here and there, flooding, disaster, drought, all, all sorts of kind of things that has not been 
for the past for decades ago, mm -hmm. but now they are happening. Even the issue of um, false prophet, there are so many called pastors, so-called pastors, mm -hmm. that they are, they are not called, but they, they call themselves. And they, they, they call themselves as pastor as b because of, of, of to satisfy their appetites. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Just because of what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Just because of that name. So there are some false prophets here and there in every corner just to prove. They, they come in, in form of Christ, but they are not Christ. In fact, there is no even light in them. Mm. They are full of darkness. So all these things, the perilous time, prayer, um, the, the brothers falling, backsliding, and all these things is, is just a sign to show that the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. So this sign is telling us as a believer that we must take it. We must be careful. We must be watchful because once saved is not forever saved. So that was why the Bible said we should, we, we should work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. And with trembling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many signs that the Bible has recorded that we should watch out for. We want to take a list. It's quite a long list. It talks about Deception of men, those who deceive and call themselves Christ. You have heard so many people calling themselves Christ. And then there are wars and rumors of war. We have nation rising against nation, kingdom rising against kingdoms, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in many places. We've been seeing them all around the world. You know the names of the country that are actually facing all this. And this is happening all around us, even in Africa. And you see, affliction of believers, the killing of believers. Mm -hmm. There are so many places around the world that you cannot even preach the gospel, but the gospel has to reach there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so many betrayers, hatred, rise of false prophets all around. These are the signs of the end times. Watch out for them. They are here. The end is very near. We have what we call the end, the, the beginning of sorrows is here. But the hand has not come yet. Just think about that. I pray that as you take heed of this, the Lord will give you understanding and you'll be prepared in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we come back, we go to our outlines. The 2014 through 2015 edition of the Sunday School Manual is out. Your Sunday School Manual now comes in your heart language, such as Yoruba, Hausa, Hebrew, Thief, Idoma, Ethic, French, Spanish. Portuguese, Polish, Russian, German, Dutch, and English really and still counting. You can grab a copy of your Sunday School Manual and your Sunday School Workbook at any RCCG parish or any CRM bookstores around you worldwide. For more info, you can contact us on www.rccg.org. Any Sunday School class you miss is like a treasure trove in the ocean. The Redeemed Christian Bible College, South Africa, a top-class Christian college where we train leaders who will influence the world through their various callings and professions in deeper things of God. We offer certificates in theology, diploma in theology, and postgraduate diploma in theology. We have several campuses in South Africa, which includes our centers in Randburg, Breed, Rustenburg, Pretoria, Poloquan, Cape Town, Durban, Bloemfontein and Eastern Cape. Admission is currently on as we set for a new session. For more info, please call us on our hotline. That's plus 2782-761-2855. Plus 2711-781-5288. You can also fax us on plus 2786-668-2855. Or you can email us on info at rcbc.org.za or visit our website on www.rcbc.org.za God bless you. At the foot of the cross. Our first lesson outline talks about signs. Signs. What are the signs of, of the end time? People are always looking for signs. Uh, Brother D. Vig Lagasse. Yes, ma'am signs they look for miracles signs but today we want to look at the signs of the end time we talked about so many of it but one point i want us to look at is the sign of abundance of iniquity what are we talking about here yeah we're talking about the things that are contrary to the word of god being 
converted to be legal or to be right. Mm. Uh -huh. So things that were normally, God said, this is wrong. Somebody will come and say, we don't believe that God created it this way. Let's put it this way. And he presented it to everybody else and still be able to back it up and say, this is how things are done. Mm. You understand? So you take something that is contrary, you converted it, and you say this is the truth. So you get to a point of saying, like sins of uh, signs of abandonment of sin, immorality, sexual perversion. Today we were coming from uh, here into this place, we we're listening to a radio, and one of the things that in the US, I think in the uh, DC, they were celebrating that today government has declared that men can marry men. Mm. The street now in the US, they are dancing, and they are dancing so that a man can marry another and man. And a woman can yeah. marry so another just, woman. Yeah, it's justified now. And so you see that if we are not, if you are not, are not prepared enough to be able to, last week we did uh, true doctrine or standing on the true doctrine. Yes. Unless you and I are able to sit on the true word of God, the system of the world is becoming more and more that it will begin to swallow us. But I believe that because we have the word, it will not swallow us. It will be the other way around. Mm. So it talks about those things that today we've got men or you've got systems that legalize things. Today you've got, you, 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 you can take off, you can have an abortion. Today you can uh, sleep with somebody else's wife and still justify it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can still marry a man, that I mean. And so it becomes a norm. And once things, it becomes a norm. Once it's practiced, it becomes a norm. And if it's a norm, it looks like it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But when we sit down and we look at scripture, it tells us that this thing, these things are not right. Mm -hmm. And so it takes the, the, the somebody who's in the word and who's strong and who's faith in God, and look at what the teachings we did like a couple of weeks ago, standing on the true doctrine, mm. that if we stand on true of the word, these things are not supposed to defeat us. These things are not supposed to deceive us. These are the things we should be able to see. I want to ask uh, Sister Molara this, because I discovered that in, in churches, mm -hmm. Christian churches, yes, I've discovered that you even have this issue of homosexuality being practiced it has been legalized in some churches mm. to the extent that the pastors of the bishop, mm. so to say, are actually homosexual than some. Mm. What do you have to say about that? It's quite against the, the word of God. In addition to what Brother Vilakasi have said, according to the Bible in the book of Genesis, he said, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they two shall become one flesh. That means a man and a woman, not a man to man or woman to woman. So those things, this issue of sexual perversion, homosexuality, even having sexual intercourse with animals and all these um, immoralities are against the word of God. Mm. And these are the signs of the end time. Because if this thing does not happen, we will not know that, okay, the, 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 the end is, is near. And the believers will not be able to stand on their feet that, okay, Jesus is coming back soon. I must sit tight. I must hold on to the word of God. So we must be very careful. This issue of immoralities, even uh, this abundance of iniquities is included in the issue of men being lovers of themselves, corruption, frauding. We see frauding here and there on the internet, even in the, in, your, in the working place. People trying to do all sorts of things in order to get to a position that God has not even ordained them or called them to be. So all these things are, are, are signs of end time. They are, they are immoralities. They are iniquities and abundance of sin here and there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Villagasi, yes, now there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Because the people that we expect to teach the word mm -hmm. are not doing so. Mm -hmm. And this is what we say are the signs of the end time. We talked about false teachers. Yes. And we discover that there are so many churches these, <laughs> these days, so many churches, mm -hmm. and they are propagating the doctrine of Satan. Mm -hmm. The Bible called them in the book of Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 9, and chapter 3, verse 9, is a synagogue of, of Satan. Satan. How do we do the, deal with this? You know, man of God, the Bible talks about that there will come a time where people's ear will be itching. They mm. want to hear what they want to hear. Mm. So you get to a point where you have believers who will want to continue sinning, continue uh, fornicating, continue being greedy, mm. and they want to find the church and find the pastor who still condemn it mm. and said, you know, it is well with you. You know, <laughs> you, you know more grace for you. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but you know, deep down, that's why we talked about standing on the two drug trail. Mm. It is the truth that you know that will set you free. Mm. You understand? So we've got to a church where we've got churches today that because of their belly, 
and because of the wealth and and everything that they have is that they'll create system that they'll teach people and they'll tell people things that they want to hear mm. and any true man of god who will sit to that church his spirit will tell him that this place is a wrong place to be mm. you understand because his spirit will tell him so you've got to a point where the system will create it for people to say i want to be in this church i'll continue say i know churches somewhere around how where a man of god will say you know just continue if you if you agree with, if you are stealing it is okay i mean continue. In what you are doing yeah just do yeah, continue do if you are sleeping with somebody do I mean, no no i'm sure god understands it was a mistake you know you can still you are so they're they're pretty much allowed so you come with all sinners who are sitting in that church just because he's got this man who's hungry and wants to fulfill what he wants praise to the lord yeah. and one thing that we know is the signs we're talking about the signs yes. our sister laura one thing is that the there will be signs of preaching all over the world. Is that right? Yes. Hmm. Can you expand it on that? Yeah, there will be signs of preaching all over the world. But it is very important and of significance to every Christian or believers to have the Spirit of God. Hmm. Because it is that spirit of discernment that will be able to that, that will make you to know the, the, the right from the wrong. Hmm. That will be able to help you to tell that okay, this person is a true prophet of God. Mm -hmm. This one is not a true prophet of God because it was written in the Bible. Jesus said some will even come and tell you Christ is in the wilderness. Do mm -hmm. not go there. Christ is in the desert. Do not go there. Mm -hmm. They will come in different form, in different shape, coming in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was why it was recorded in the Bible that at the end of the day, many will say that but Lord, we preach in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We, we do miracles in your name. How come you ask us to go? How come you ask us to depart from you? But we tell them that I don't know you before. You are just doing this. You, 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 you just hide under my name. Just a camouflage. So we Christians, we, we, we must be able to have that spirit of discernment, to be able to differentiate between the right and the wrong, so that at the end of the day, we will not backslide. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to add something? Yes, I want to add to that. You know, if you, if, if, if you see now, never have I imagined that you'll find that Christianity will be preached in Afghanistan. Mm. But I can tell you this now. We did research yesterday because I was an HOD of a department where we used to do what we do, prayers for the nation. Mm. So we do research and find out. Probably you'll find that in Afghanistan, what they'll do is that they'll be fellowshipping underground. Mm. Mm. You understand? And they'll still be preaching there. Mm. Mm. And so what they'll do is that they'll create a pool of water, they'll pretend like they're swimming and they're baptizing each other. Mm. So never in the world have you ever imagined that in Afghanistan, where half of it is not Christ, but I think there are about a thousand Christians there or something like mm. that. But you find that underground, mm. there's a preaching there, there's a church there. Probably you park your car here, you walk down, maybe there's a church down, and then you get... Yes, we will be going for the second outline, but let's quickly go on break. And when we come back, we go to the outline that says, you have been won. The 2014-2015 to 2015 edition of the Sunday School Manual is out. Your Sunday School Manual now comes in your heart language, such as Yoruba, Hausa.
Second outline, you have been warned. God warned his children to take it lest they will be caught unaware. God is warning his children. I want to start from Sister Lara. And uh, God warns us in so many ways. And for specific one year, he said, lest you fall. Lest you fall. What, is, what does this mean? The Bible made us to understand in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. It says, He that thinketh he stand, let him take it, lest he fall. Hmm. And there are some preaching nowadays that um, once, once you are saved, you are forever saved. Hmm. And that is far from the truth. Because in this world, even though if, if, if you are innocent, if you are holy, we are living in the world of sin. As we have said, there are a lot of signs of the end time. We see immoralities here and there, we hear it. We even live in the world where Im those immoralities are being committed. So for as a Christian, we need to take it. We need to stand on our ground. We need to hold on to that truth in which we believe in. We need to, we, we need to go back to our first love. That very day we confess our uh, Lord as our personal, I mean Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We need to call back to that first love and hold on to the truth mm. and stand on that truth so that nobody will come from anywhere and come and deceive you and tell you, no, Christ is this in sin, this side, can you follow me to that side? We must be able to know what the Bible is saying concerning these things that are happening. So as a Christian, we need to take it. We need to, we need to study the word of God. We need to be in tune with God all the time so that we will not backslide and slip away with the word. I want to bring us to that point that she just explained yes. about lest you fall. I was explaining actually to some of these uh, staff in my office mm -hmm. today about temptation. Mm -hmm. And I explained that temptation, the devil will always come to you in where you are not even expecting. expecting or ready for him. Mm -hmm. It will strike you at your weakest point. Yes. Where you think you are weak is what is going to use against you. Mm -hmm. And now, for a man of God can fall. Yes. Exactly. What are those areas that we have to watch out for? You know, man of God, when God is lifting us up, one of the things that we need to identify, we need to check what are the weaknesses mm. that brings us low. It is better for you to fall while you're on the ground because you can learn very well. Mm. But it is a hard thing for somebody to fall from the top. So which means, unless we deal with our weaknesses while we are still in this ground, mm. it is going to be hard when we fall there because it is difficult to fall from the faith and you're already on top and for you to come down. So God is simply telling us that let's deal with the things that we know that are troubling us. We know these things are weak while we are still here. Before, before I become this superman of God and one day I'm not dealing with the issues, maybe like I still man. One mm. day I become a rich man, then I still man. And I fail to deal with it now. Mm. If I don't ask God to deliver me from lust or from flesh or from money and all those things, when I get to the top, it's the same thing that will bring me down. Mm. That is very so it important. Is, it, is, it is so unique that we don't try and pretend if I have a problem with women, I need to be able to tell God that God mm. deliver me from this thing. Mm. Before I get there and I start least sleeping with my church members. Mm. When I start, so let's deal with this thing now. Let's be practical. I love practicality because it makes you to be able to deal with things. Mm. Theory will just be theory. That in is addition powerful. to that, in addition to that also, no, before as as you are going growing going up, you must you must work out your relationship with God. Yeah. And then um, before you get to that top, you must be able, every, every, every human being has a weakness, either mm. one or two. Mm. You must be able to identify your weakness, mm. pray concerning it, and be careful about that part. If the issue is the issue of women, don't, de don't go and uh, uh, start canceling or you deal with women, women program in church. Mm. Because you know that you, you, you have that attraction mm. to women. And if the issue, if your problem or your weakness is the issue of money, don't go and be the head of Osha or you start sitting where they are counting money mm. so that devil will not tempt you. Mm. Because he's always there looking for how to bring the believers, how to bring the, the children of God down. Mm. So if you know your weakness, pray about it and also be careful about your movement. Mm. Don't stay where you can be easily tempted. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's quite important that we take ease. Because the enemy is on the prowl looking for whom to destroy. The enemy that we have is a thief. The Bible says, a thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life and life in abundance. 
When you become a Christian, one thing you must know is that you already know telling hell. Mm -hmm. And your weakness is known mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. The enemy wants to strike you yes. mm -hmm. where you are weak. So mm -hmm. take heed. It's at the point, it, it is possible that at the point that the enemy attack is when Jesus Christ will come. Mm -hmm. It's possible you might not be able to make it. And that is why you need to be very careful. God is warning you. Let's talk about this other one, which is quite interesting as well. It says, take it that they shall deliver you up to the council. I believe it's talking about disciples, men of God, children of God will be delivered to the council. Who are the council we're talking about, Brother Villagas? For me, council means so many things. Mm. One, being delivered from cancer can simply be means that one someone who is born again, from his family you find that only maybe 90% of them are not born again. Mm. And so they want him to sacrifice his faith. Mm. It could also be in the working place where they will tell you that here we do, we did, we do dolly deals. We corrupt here. Mm. Mm. We fake mm. checks mm. and all things like that. Mm. So you get to a system where 90% of the time is corrupt and you are like 10% mm. to be there. That, that simply means like that. You get to a church where they will say we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we can be stealing from people. Mm. So it will cause you to be able to come to a point of saying, if this is a true doctrine you are carrying, it will make you to say, it's either I keep my salvation, you keep your things. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is quite straightforward. And this aspect of false prophet, I want to bring us back to it. We have to take heed. And the Bible is telling us to watch at the same time and pray. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, Sister Molara? The issue of false prophet, it means that we, we, we've said something similar to that when we begin this program. It means that people will come in the form of Christ. Mm -hmm. they, 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 will, they will tell you they are Christ. They will tell you things that, that does not relate to the Bible. They will even tell you that just do as I say. Don't mm -hmm. do as I, I do. Please God so will help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just, just to come in there now. Men of God, so-called, who are going to deceive people, they are not going to deceive people who are not born again most of the time. Mm. Exactly. That's true. You understand? They are not going to be wasting time to be chasing people who are just sitting somewhere. They're going to be deceiving people who have sit in church for 10 years. Mm. But the interesting part is that because some of us, we don't carry the word. That's why I've always tell people that let's read the Bible because mm. we want to know God, not mm. because we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So number one, anybody who's going to be fooled or be corrupt is somebody who knows about God. Mm. Now the Bible says that the Spirit of God bear with him with our spirit. Mm. No matter the kind of expensive suit that man is wearing, no matter the Italian shoes he's wearing, but if it's a fake one, your spirit will say, truly God, I, I respect you, you are a man of God, but what you are telling me does not correlate. Listen, every prophecy that a man of God gives must go attached with scripture. Mm. And if God is going to reveal something to you, that man of God must confirm it. Mm. So anybody who's going to sit in church must sit with a, a kind of revelation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is quite powerful. We, we could go on and on about this. And the time will never be enough for us. The signs of end times, they are here. We are seeing what is going on in so many churches. If you check in your YouTube and watching the news, you see churches that are making their members to eat flowers, mm -hmm. to eat grasses, to drink fuel, petrol. petrol. Mm -hmm. And is the, does they have any correlation with the Bible? The sign of the end time is here. You go to so many churches, everything is taken with levity. There is no word of salvation in that church. It's all about money, making money. And the people that are on the pulpit, the people that are dispensing the message, are actually drug dealers. The signs of the end times is here. Pastors sleeping with members, members sleeping with other members and all form of atrocities going on in the so-called church. The sign of end time is here. We can go on and on, but may the Lord give you understanding. Know that the end is near. And when the gospel is preached to all the world, then the end shall come. And I pray that you will make the rapture Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, Sambonani, Brother Villakasi. Mm, thank you for your time on this program. Mm, I hope I, I just wish I can speak that language. I, I, I'll teach you, sir. Okay, is, is that Zulu or what? It is Zulu. It's Zulu. It is Zulu. I speak Zulu. You speak Zulu. I speak Zulu. That is wonderful. Yes, sir. And Sister Molara, thank you for your time as well. Thank God, sir. The Lord bless you in Amen. Jesus' name. 
Viewers till we meet again, I remain your teacher and host, the King Kennedy, our King Pedro. I want you to stay with the Lord, and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.